Hi, folks. Dr. John Kongsvik here. I'm the director of TESOL Trainers. We're education consultants, and we work with school districts all over the world who serve English learners. Whether you take our professional development programs, our peer coaching programs, our on-site or online workshops, our number one job is to help you connect students to the language, to the content, and to one another. Today, I'm here to talk to you about metacognition. And in this metacognitive moment we're going to have, I'd like to share with you what metacognition is, why you should incorporate it in the design and the delivery of your lessons, and how it can look in the classroom. So what is metacognition anyways? Meta, meaning beyond, and cognition, knowledge. Metacognition is thinking about one's own thinking or understanding one's own understanding or knowing about one's knowledge. This is what metacognition is. It's designed to develop self-awareness and the role a learner plays in their own learning process. So why should you teach metacognition to your students? It's a really good question to ask, and this topic has a lot of research backing it up here are a couple of key things I'd like to point out right here. It boosts learner responsibility. It increases awareness. It raises self-efficacy, catalyzes learning, and encourages autonomy. And folks, when you're looking at that list, just ask yourselves, is there anything on this list that my students wouldn't benefit from? The fact of the matter is, our job as educators is not to prepare students for something. It's to help them prepare themselves for anything. And metacognitive strategies in helping my students master them scaffolds them into doing just that. So how can you teach metacognition to your students? Of course, I can Google, Google metacognition in sixth grade math, and somebody's already got this list of strategies that I could use in my sixth grade math class. It might look like brainstorming, mind mapping, doing think alouds, even doing a think pair share to reflect on whatever math strategy you use. All of these are really powerful strategies. Same thing can be done for 11th grade language arts. Somebody's already got a list of them out there. I want to share with you right now three really powerful strategies that can be used in any context. Here's the first one right here, metacognitive strategy number one, practicing reading strategies. Now, you could take reading out and you could put writing, listening, cooperative learning, giving oral presentations, but... Let me share with you how the pre, during, and post aspects of this metacognitive strategy might look. So right before we practice the reading strategies, I'm going to give my students this list right here. Looks like this, studying text features, reread confusing parts, rephrase each section, breathe and relax, redirect a wandering mind, and annotate the text. And I'm going to have my students choose one, or if it's not the first or second time we've done this, choose a couple of these strategies that they're going to consciously use while we read a text. I'm also going to have them take their pulse and measure their own level of comfort before we even read, maybe on a scale of one to five. One meaning I'm not really confident in it, and five meaning I'm really confident in using this. In the during part of it, I'm going to give my students a chance to read this text. And in the post, they're going to go back and first and foremost, take their pulse again and see, was I a two at the beginning, but now I feel like I'm a one, or maybe I felt that now I'm a three or a four, and also possibly even share what they felt about that strategy, how it helped, or how it hindered them in that experience. So. Metacognitive strategy number two is the what, so what, now what. This comes from David Cobb's experiential learning cycle. You know, those four stages that everybody goes through and they learn anything. Well, in the what, so what, now what, 
This is a strategy that can be used at any given point. Let me set the context for us as a post-exam context. My students just finished taking a test. We corrected it together, and I'm going to talk and reflect and discuss these three points. What? Reflect on what worked or didn't work when you were taking that test. So what? Discuss any learnings as a result of the experience, not just the test taking experience, but also the experience of reflecting on it afterwards. And finally, and just as important as the other two, now what are you going to do with this information? So share how future exams are going to be impacted by this experience you just had. What a great way to not just raise self-awareness, folks, but also help students realize that they are the critical component in their own learning process. So the third strategy, what we call metacognitive moments, again, it can be used in any context at any moment. Let me show you what it might look like at the end of a lesson. And I wanna ask my students, so what's something that helped your learning? And hopefully out of my students' mouths comes something like this. Um, something that helped my learning was ba 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 But the fact of the matter is, if my students have never built that muscle or none of their teachers before me has ever asked them what helped or hindered your learning, the chances are they're going to need to be scaffolded into being able to respond to this confidently and competently. So I'm going to give them this poster. It looks like this right here, where it says brainstorming as a class, categorizing in groups, practicing with a partner, receiving feedback, summarizing my learnings. You see this little space up here for any things they'd like to add. And I'm going to give my students a chance to choose something from my poster until they develop that muscle and then to use it. Metacognitive moments, just like the other two strategies I shared with you, can be really powerful metacognitive tools that you can help your students master. The fact of the matter is, all of these are designed to raise self-awareness. And here's the thing about self-awareness. Self-awareness doesn't help you avoid mistakes. Self-awareness helps you learn from them. How powerful can that be when my students at their core really understand this? So to close this out, teaching metacognition gives students the skills that they need to grow through life. Now, when you're thinking about the what, the why, and the how of this metacognitive moment we shared, you can check us out at www.tsaltrainers.com for more information on metacognition. You can email me, john at tsaltrainers.com, and I'd be more than happy to share with you how we can help you take teaching and learning to the next level. We're TESOL, we're TESOL trainers, and we are your scaffold to success.